Hello, welcome again to another long overdue edition of the Techno Wizard Show. Uh, yeah, where have I been for the past uh, 10 months or so since April of 2015? Oh, it's January. It's been a while. Yeah, so I'm going back to school for electrical engineering. I'm about that far of the way through in the first course of this here as you see introductory circuit analysis and everything from Ohm's law to calculating uh, uh, power used in watts uh, and just all kinds of uh, electronic circuit building only with resistors and only with direct currents so far so the next course starts up in just under a couple of weeks we're getting the capacitors and all that and you might think oh, wait don't i already know this stuff sort of but decided to get a formal education in it certificate program so what we're going to do on today's show is uh take advantage of an almost drastic m misfortune <laughs> that had, I, I had regarding my laptop uh, computer. My hard drive crashed. Well, Windows says, oh no, the hard drive's freaking out. And so, uh, there was something wrong with this bugger here. And I had just enough time to back up this, make a VHD with a Windows 7 utility to an old junky uh, hard drive that I got out of uh, the MIT flea market here. See, this is my uh, setup, sort of. Yeah, I got the old dual monitors, and there is my uh, external IDE drive. Yeah, I put a heat sink just resting on top of it. And even that did get a little warm. So thankfully I didn't lose any data after I went up button the hard drive. This worked perfectly. And what we're going to do today for a fun project is we're going to take this thing apart and see how many platters are inside and whatnot. So let's get to that. Okay, so... What I did here is I took my trusty old uh, screwdriver bit set and I picked out I'm going to use a triple zero Phillips head to get these tiny little screws out of here and then I'm going to use a T5 Torx bit which is what we're going to start with for taking out these tiny little screws uh, off of uh, the casing. This is a SATA drive so Let's get started. Enough these teensy little dorks bits here. Is one look at how tiny that screw is, man. You even see that? Oh my goodness. That's really small. I mean look at that. There it is. We're looking at about a Sixteenth there in height just over less than an eighth So I'm gonna use to hold all these tiny screws so I don't get lost and then embedded in my feet later or something And I walk on them. It's gonna use a little container. This container is for coin rolls I've done a little coin collecting just a little bit though not much but these tubes, which you can get off eBay pretty cheap, they're great for holding small electronic parts. So we'll continue here. There's two. There's three. There's four. This is a 750 megabyte, I mean 750 gigabyte uh, hard drive here. 
I replaced it with a one terabyte drive for only sixty dollars so it wasn't too bad okay that's all of the screws that I can see there's usually a hidden screw underneath the label somewhere at least there are on the larger IDE drives so yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to poke around and find the hidden screw here is that it? No. Let's see. Is it under here? No. Ah, I guess it's just prying right apart here for me. Or at least letting me pull up enough to see where the last little screw is likely to be. Is that it? No, not quite. Look, let's get this uh, get out of here. Gonna need to use some pliers to get that out now, but easy enough. Okay, Toshiba label, you're coming off of there. Ah, it's like a metalized sort of film. Lots to bet this is probably it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hold on, I got my needle nose pliers up over here. Ooh, where'd it go? Come out of there, you. Look at this. Here. There we are. That's what I'm looking for? Okay. So these little SATA laptop drives, you, you got to take it off in order to get down to... Here. Oh, this appears to be just a seal of sorts. There it is. It is where I thought it was, but this film is designed so you don't go poking a screwdriver through it. So once that's off of there, it's off. And here's that last final screw. Alright. There, now open it up. And there it is. Well, right off, I don't see any real obvious damage. It looks nice and shiny there. But there's the platters. There's the uh, your classic uh, hello mirror smooth, quite nice. Is your armature and your Eden heads and all the usual happy little stuff. It's going to be a rear earth magnet in there. So. Okay, we got some, some more bits to uh, take out here. This one happens to have another T-screw right in the center. But conveniently located. Takes a slightly larger bit though to get it out. Yeah, I, I've also found this in IDE drives. They use two different size Torx bits to uh, uh, one to secure the case to seal out the air the seal on this bit is one size Torx bit and is a different size Torx bit I'm gonna go up to a T6 now and see how this will work that ought to do it yeah to uh, hold the inner workings together Yeah. Also in class, we study these. Oh, geez. Study the use of uh, Norton's theorem, which is, of course, based on Thevenin's theorem. Difference between a voltage source and a current source. 
how to use determinants, which is similar to matrices, apparently. Didn't get into matrices at all. Also took a course in C programming. And I took calculus again because I thought, hey, yeah, that'd be good. I took calculus so 20 years ago. And I, I got a C in it. I was able to do it. But, uh, yeah, I got most of the way through this calculus course. And I got into derivatives and... You know what a pain derivatives are to do. And, I, you know, I get these other courses going on. I'm thinking, do they transfer in my credits? Because, you know, I, I can do a derivative if I need to. But um, they had not transferred my credits automatically. I had to call and ask them, since I'm doing just a certificate-based program. So I did all that paperwork, went up to their office, and yeah, so I transferred the cut credit in, and I aced straight A's on circuits and C programming. So I'm doing quite well so far. All right, let's get one more screw out of here. All these bits. If I was going to do something different, it would be to get one of these with the, uh, where the Torx bit head, uh, doesn't allow sliding down so much. Thankfully, I don't really need to push in any on that. There we go. This last little bugger here, that's free spinning. And that. Okay, so let's take our old needle nose pliers here. Well, let's just see what loose bits fall out when we do this. Nothing really falls out. Here's the drive head separator. And now you can take this piece off here. This would be the connector board. Up, oh, see how it uh, goes in there. It, the whole little board there. And yeah, there's a rare earth magnet. And we got a pair of them. Quite strong, as you see. Not bad for the size, considering. And see if we can get these other bits out now. The needle nose pliers to encourage it to be removed, maybe. Oh, there's one more little screw holding things on here. And of course this screw goes back to the same type of screw that was used externally. So I got me having to switch Torx bit heads again. So, okay, I can do that. Ah, I see that this has a spacer to help hold the magnets apart. There, yeah. Switching out the Torx bits here. Wait, that's the uh, Phillips head. Wrong one. Here we go. T5. T5. Da, 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 da. There you go. That's a long one. Considering everything else we've seen here. Uh, I think this is riveted in, perhaps. Let's try to pop it out here, can we? 
Look at those fine little bits of uh, copper wire that they use here. You see, what it, how this basically works is electrical signals come into here and they get fed in this little thin little ribbon here. It has a wire and that fits an electrical uh, current into this coil. And that interacts with the magnets and that sets these drive heads to spinning. Well, this drive heads reading over here as the plates spin around and it is stacked uh, two plates deep if you can see that there so that's basically how a hard drive works in the probably most oversimplified way you can think of oh, let's see now if we try to pry the magnet out can we get that Getting the platter out might prove a little bit difficult. Ah, lost the part there. There's another piece come loose. Let's put all the wee bits in there. I'll switch back up the Torx bits here. Getting these drive plates out is proving a little difficult. Oh, there we go. I just had to put my finger on it and hold that down. And there. Now we can get our platters and whatnot here. There's our hubcap. And here's a drive platter. Try to hold it by the edges. Yeah, I did fingerprint the, that side of it, of course. But yeah, look at how fantastically smooth that is. Look at that gigabytes worth of data. It's perfectly mirror smooth. Hello. So, I'll shut up a wee bit. There we go. So we get magnet, drive, gonna have a ring here. Yep, that's what I thought, and it is as I thought. Ah, let's get this little speck of dust or something here. There are a couple of wee imperfections. Nope, that was just dust. So in terms of why my hard drive failed, in summary, I have no... And I have no physical evidence for the cause of failure. There's no scratching on it or anything. Just must have been a bad sector, I suppose. Or windows acting up. In any case, we got the two platters there. All these goodies. I'm getting out of it, you know. There's the ring. One ring to rule them all, eh? Hey, that actually fits quite well. Are you married to your computer? I guess I am, because it gave me a ring. <laughs> okay, get off there. Here you go. All right. It actually had a good snug fit. Turn that down on a lathe or something, and it would fit quite well. <laughs> Oh boy. Alright then. And this stubborn thing still doesn't quite want to come off here, does it? Oh, look at that. There's another torque screw holding it on. There we are. From the back side. And out you go. There we are. Now, oh, look how it jumped to the magnet here. So this is its normal position. And you see how 
the aluminum steel pieces whatnot jump up there so there's that assembly out see here is the drive head look at how small these little readers are what these readers are or so as I recall are teensy tiny little magnets that go up and down below and they got these teeny tiny little wires on them you see I don't know how well you can see but uh, anyways that's what sends the electrical signal back and forth and all so here we go we got that and of course, lastly, we have our battery, which is held down by a course of one more screw. I call it a battery. It's a magnet. And there we are. Here is our... Oh, look how it has these little armatures sticking up so that I can do this. I can take these uh, two... Wow, that's a really powerful pull for something so small and thin. Look at how small those magnets are. I have to almost slide them apart. But if I place them just so, without pinching myself, there we are. I can maintain a spacing and there look, you can see all the way through it now okay battery is about out but there's how to take apart a hard drive and all the goodies that you get uh, from it of course, circuit boards enough to move thanks for watching techno wizard and we'll see you next time